This is the ASUS ZenBook Pro Duo, and its big differentiator is pretty easy to spot. It's a laptop with two screens. You think that maybe means that they aren't that great of screens then, but you'd be wrong. The primary screen is a 15.6 inch 4K UHD resolution, 16 by nine aspect ratio, OLED display. And because it's OLED, it has an insane contrast ratio of a thousand to one. Because of this, the screen is also HDR certified, so you can watch any HDR content on it from say YouTube or Netflix. And I have to admit, it looks great. There are a few other laptop manufacturers working on OLED models of their computers, but this is the first one I've gotten to see and actually use on a working review unit. And I have to admit, I'm kind of excited about them a lot more. They also managed to get pretty slim five millimeter bezels on the sides of that screen and have an IR enabled webcam above it that also supports Windows Hello. Below the screen, we have the other screen. Asus is calling this the ScreenPad Plus, and it's the same width as the primary screen and has a 4K horizontal resolution to match of 3840 and 1100 pixels for its height, giving us just shy of a 3.5 to one aspect ratio. Besides the super ultra wide aspect ratio, the bottom screen also has a matte coating on it that Asus says is to stop the basically flat laying screen from reflecting ceiling lights, which makes a lot of sense. The idea here is that you can use this smaller screen as sort of a separate monitor and it can help you multitask and be more productive. And in fact, it is even set up as an external monitor in Windows, so it functions exactly as you'd expect. You can drag and drop windows between the two screens, even use Windows' snap feature to quickly resize items on either screen, and Asus has added some extra software to help make using both of these screens in tandem a bit easier. First up, whenever you start to drag up window, three buttons appear that you can then drag the window to to perform quick actions involving the dual screens. The first is a button to quickly send the window to the bottom screen and to the primary screen when you're using it on the second screen. Then we have a pin option that will send the window to the bottom screen, but also pin it to an app launcher that is located on that screen, which we'll get to more in a sec. And finally, you can drag it to the last one to have the window span across both screens. Personally, this seems to be like a show off feature to me as I'm not really sure how useful it is, but Maybe that's just me. Next, we have a button on the side of that bottom screen that lets you open the launcher that I mentioned. There are a few things in here by default, but you can add to it using that pin option and also tap the pencil icon at the top to be able to remove items. Also in the launcher, you can tap the task group button and get access to four presets. You can save your windows or apps that are on the primary and secondary screen by having them the way you want them, then tapping on the task group icon, one of the numbered options, then the capture button. Then whenever you wanna go back to that preset, you just tap that number and bring them all back. Under that, there's a multitasking button, which they call App Navigator, that opens up all of the apps or windows that you have on the second display only, compared to the usual windows gesture to see all of the open programs in history, which would do so on both screens. We also have a handwriting input down here that you can tap to turn all or part of the second screen into a handwriting recognition tool that you can then use with the included Asus pen that the device comes with. It's easy to use, but not sure it's any faster than me typing. But if you're one of those people that appreciate the action of writing, it's smooth enough and it's enjoyable. So when we all first saw the device, the immediate reaction was that this seemed like a gimmick and that it probably wasn't useful. But the more myself and my friend MJ from Gadget Match, who you should absolutely go check out his video on this laptop as well for more info at the link below, used it, the more we both realized how useful it actually was. Being able to have a WhatsApp, Slack, and Spotify in the bottom screen to communicate, etc., while writing an article above reminded me of having a dual monitor setup. Now, it does take some getting used to the fact that it is below your main screen, but because it is just sitting right above the keyboard, which we'll talk about more in a sec, your hands don't move far to say, tap on one of those windows to bring focus, type something, and then tap back on the main one to keep working. Some other quick examples I could see using it for is maybe my timeline in Premiere Pro, giving me more room on the main screen for color correction tools, effects panels, etc. Photoshop to put the image on the main screen and my tools, etc. on the bottom one. And something interesting that Asus mentioned in their briefing, but they are currently quote unquote working on, is the ability to have customizable buttons for whatever program you're using show up in the second screen. Now, the screens while being the most unique thing about this laptop, isn't the entire story here. The specs of this thing are proper, so let's go through them really quick. Beneath the screen, we have a full keyboard that isn't the clickiest I've used, but it feels good to type on once you get used to it being slightly to the left. It's pushed this way to make room for the trackpad that is positioned directly to the right of it. This trackpad is thankfully a precision trackpad, meaning the drivers are handled by Windows directly instead of each individual manufacturer, and allows you to use Windows gestures and is more precise, as well as just being better. One trick Asus added to the trackpad that we've seen on their other laptops is the ability to tap this capacitive button at the top right to turn it into a number pad. 
You can toggle between two brightness settings by tapping the sun symbol on the top left, and you can even still use it as a mouse when it's on. The numbers only work when you tap them deliberately and without clicking the trackpad mechanically down. The ZenBook Pro Duo also comes with a palm rest you can lay in front of the computer. This is probably due to the fact that the keyboard is pushed down to the edge of the base thanks to that second screen, and they wanted to give you an option to still rest your wrists on. Personally, it's one more thing to carry around to me, so I probably would never use it, but again, maybe that's just me. Speaking of the base of the laptop, let's check out the ports. On the left, we have our DC power input for charging the 70 watt hour battery in the model that I have, an HDMI port, and a USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type A port. On the right, we have another USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type A port, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and a USB C Thunderbolt 3 port. For audio, we have a speaker system tuned by Harman and Kardon that sounds like this. In this trident resides the power of Atlantis. And we have a set of array microphones that work well for Cortana or my preference, Amazon Alexa. There is even a blue LED on the front of the device that activates when you use Alexa to mimic the Amazon Echo devices. Oh, and I know you're concerned about that palm rest blocking that lovely blue LED. Well, don't fret, because it actually has a plastic cutout to bring the light up to the top of the rest. For connectivity, we have Bluetooth 5.0 and the newer standard for Wi-Fi that we're starting to see pop up everywhere lately, Wi-Fi 6 or 802.11ax. Powering this laptop, we have up to a Core i9-9980HK processor, up to 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM, and an NVIDIA GTX 2060 GPU with six gigs of GDR6 memory. And since ASUS is aiming this at creative professionals, those are all very welcomed indeed. For storage, we have the option of up to a one terabyte PCIe SSD. By the way, I was told this isn't a final unit, so I didn't run my usual battery test, Premiere render test, and gaming benchmarks, in case anyone was wondering where those were. For software, it's running Windows 10. It comes with the usual Windows bloatware like Minecraft, etc. But you can easily uninstall any of that by just right-clicking in the Start menu. Besides that, the test unit I had had a few Corel apps installed to showcase the creative aspects of the laptop, I'm sure. And we had ASUS's My ASUS app that gives you access to updates, system diagnostics, battery health, etc. And ASUS said that this laptop will be available starting in Q3 of this year, but they didn't give a price. There you guys, let me know what you think in the comments below and subscribe to my weekly email newsletter for more tips, tricks, tech news, and other things that doesn't necessarily make it here to video at the link below as well. If you like this video though, please thumbs up it or share it. Also, feel free to subscribe and ding the bell next to where subscribe so you can notify when I do new videos. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching.